I only knew Jack personally in an intimate way for those few months from the fall of 55 until May of uh, 56 when I set sail for Japan. I never saw him again. Mm. And it was, like, uh, it was like a brief camp out together when we shared that cabin in Marin County mm -hmm. through the spring of that year. Mm -hmm. Practiced meditation together, talked Buddhist texts, uh, wrote poetry, and drank a lot of toke. Mm -hmm. And then I left. Now, at that time, uh, all that Jack and I were doing together were practicing mountains, practicing wood cutting, practicing flowers and birds, and practicing Buddhist studies. Does the Dharma Bums, is that a really accurate story, or does it, is a lot of it that's made up? Some or? of it's a novel. Mm -hmm. you know, some of it reflects uh, things that happened, but uh, even the reflection is novel. Too, you know, like Bruce would say. I mean, did you know he was going to write a book about uh, you? Yeah, he told me huh. toward the end. He said, I'm going to write a book about you, Gary. You're going to be really famous. Really? <laughs> do, you, do you think he had a sense of, of uh, himself as being a uh, major novelist? I mean, it's like. Yeah, a, I do, at that time even. And the, what, how a did, clear how sense did of, of his skill, his power, his vocation, and his energy, and that, and that there was something that he was going to be saying. I mean, in a way, it's like there's this funny kind of worship, you know, of like what you, what you well, represented. Well, he, he does that in the novel, mm -hmm. uh, and that's, he plays that in some of the other novels, too, where he, he makes his first person singular into kind of a naive uh, uh, character that uh, elicits information from people by pretending not to know. Uh, and he didn't do that much with me in person, although it's true he was real naive about some things. Like uh, what? What was, I mean, what was his name? Uh, he didn't really know what was involved in going backpacking and hiking and climbing. It was all new yeah. to him, but he was a quick learner. Uh, and he didn't know much about nature, uh, or that you could know anything about nature, really, in, yeah. a, in a specific way. And so spending some time uh, on uh, the spring bird migrations and the many species that were coming through in Marin County that year, 500 a year, come through Marin County on the Pacific Flyway. So we were uh, checking off species as they came through that little shack. And, uh, and Jack really appreciated all that information. Yeah. Like we were cutting some eucalyptus and splitting eucalyptus for firewood for the stove. And he was just like a kid, you know, learning how to start a chainsaw, and yeah. how to handle a mall. Yeah. It was wonderful. Yeah. Same way with when we went backpacking. Well, I was going to say we did another trip, too, besides to the High Sierra. We did a, a two-night, maybe, camping trip hiking right from Homestead Valley up over Mount Tam and camping over in the drainages on the north side of Tamalpais. Just local places and swinging around and coming back. Was Kerouac uh, really as frightened? I mean, that, it, there's, a, there's a thing mm -hmm. where he... Mm -mm. Oh, interesting. Oh, that's part of his storytelling. Huh. Because he says, I, I was a coward. Was this, I'm, I'm the Buddha known as the coward, but at least I have joy or something like that? He likes to play with that. Huh. He's an athlete. Yeah. <laughs> Did you think of him as an intellectual? No. But well-read, to make the distinction. A very well-read person and a very um, a sharp person with a uh, critical acuity when he wished to employ it, but not like a practicing intellectual, which is a style, is all it is. The Buddhist metaphor? Yeah. Suffering, impermanence. The first noble truth, that everything is impermanent, and that uh, we must find our joy uh, and our freedom in suffering, finally. Uh, he swung around through that, through the Buddhist understanding of that, and it's all through his writing, uh, and then settled back into maybe the more familiar comfort of Catholic metaphors. Yeah, you asked me, uh, did he seem very American? And I said, yes. And you said, why? And uh, I was ruminating on, on how to answer that. Um, it was in his, his physical health and strength, uh, in his unconscious grace, in his childlikeness, which was real a lot of the time, in his openness to experiencing new things and learning new things, uh, his uh, paradoxical joy in a kind of freshness in the world, paradoxical, because at the same time he was aware of suffering and impermanence. And maybe all of that is sort of American. Uh, and uh, 
a total absence in Jack of anything elite or yuppie or academic or intellectual uh, or any of that posturing at all that we associate with learned people, middle class white people. He was more like your aunt, you know, sitting at a table in the kitchen or your grandma sitting at a table in the kitchen speaking in common sense truths uh, about orderliness and uh, uh, kindness, you know, basic instructions. Uh, and so very much like my old aunt from Texas uh, and easy to be with.